Empty Pool, 2008. Hello, listener. You're live on the air. Or more like, it's dead air. Yep, I'll see myself out now. Body Pool 2008 stars Steve McHatty from 300, Watchmen, the movie, and Mother Fame plays Grant. Lisa Hole from Haven and Flashpoint, Canadian TV shows, Fame plays Sydney. And Georgina Riley from Murdoch Mysteries fame plays L'Oreal Ann. And a big shout out to Rance Alanak from Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone in 3D fame plays Dr. Mendez. Written by Tony Burgess, who adapted the screenplay of his own novel to movie form in under 48 hours. And directed by Bruce McDonald, with the pace and tone of Pontypool 2008 is a nice slow burn that goes nicely insane at the climax of the film. Set designs and visuals is that of your normal radio station, set up with nice blues and hues colorscape, with a bright white scope of filming to boots. A run of the mill horn music with steady camera glide and pans give Pontypool 2008 a sweet zombie movie. That's not really your run-of-the-mill zombie movie. Ah! Hello, caller. You are in the spoiler territory. Oh, hey. Oh, whoa. Watch out, everybody. It's the news. Ah, forget it. Forget that. That was a terrible idea. I'll leave it in, though. I'll probably leave it in. Spoilers. Spoiler talk. There's just some things that I say and do that I gotta leave in and not edit out. And that's gonna be one of them. <laughs> Pudgy Pool, 2008. Filmed by Bruce McDonald. Old Bruce McDonald. Who did Hardcore Logo. That was my first Bruce McDonald film I ever saw. He did a number of television shows and Canadian movies. He's a big, big Canadian director. Big famous Canadian director. Cool guy too from what I heard from friends of mine who had met him and had a beer with him. This, I've been to Pontypool, the actual Pontypool in Ontario. And it's, uh, where, where the hell is it again? So we went, it was like north of Oshawa, like northwest of Oshawa. I remember we went there because uh, some old friends of mine and I, we watched Pontypool in 2012. 13, something like that, and we were so uh, jazzed about the movie that we decided to go to Pontypool, Ontario, to see what was going on there and see what it's like. Not really actually knowing or figuring it out until much, much, much later that uh, the entire movie of Pontypool was filmed in Toronto. Uh, and then doing some research, I found out even further that it was pretty much one big stage play. Uh, a lot of the stuff was filmed in stage, in a little stage in Toronto. A little, uh, but hey, what are you going to do? That's, uh, that's how the movie business works. That's how movies work most of the time. As you know, that's filmed inside, in a stage. But hey, what are you going to do? But anyways, we went to Pontypool, Ontario, the real Pontypool. And, uh, and there's not, and well, it's a small town. I don't even know if it's really a town. Um, let me go, I'm going to Google map it real quick. Just give me a second here. Uh, it's, it says, yeah, it's not even really a town. It's just, it says it's like an uncorporated town. Uh, that's near the Kortha Lakes. There you go. So Kortha Lakes, that's cool. Camping town and all that. But uh, as far as I remember, what Pontypool was eight years ago, last time I was there, and the only time I was there, 
Uh, it's a small town, and uh, the people there are incredibly nice. For a bunch of Torontonians that came up there to uh, drink and party and see what was going down in Pontypool. We exited it fairly early. We only spent a couple hours there because, uh, well, yeah, it's just a small town. There's really nothing going on there, but still a nice town nonetheless. So those of you who are from Pontypool, Ontario, or, 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 or have family there and all that good jazz, just know that, uh, that uh, some guy from Toronto reviewing a movie about your town uh, that uh, was actually never actually filmed in your town likes your town for the two hours that he was there and uh, and it was good times so moving on to the movie now this movie is in the category of zombie movies even though Bruce McDonald says they're not zombies he called them conversationalists so it's people that get infected by a English word it's not just a single English word, it's a any sort of English word. And you become infected when you understand the English word that you are saying that the virus takes hold of, and the signal from the English word that you're saying will uh, infect you and turn you into an insane, rabid person, kind of like 28 Days Later. That's where I'm kind of thinking the comparison is for those of you who are going to listen to this, and I'm speaking to all three of you, and all three of you, I thank you for listening to this rant I'm about to do that I'm hoping will stay under 20 minutes, and that's the infection. The infection is that of someone uh, says a word they understand it and then they say it over and over again they get confused and then they start puking out blood and then you attack people I, I it's a weird movie man it's a weird movie I, I when I saw this I, I've seen Pontypool three four five times I've seen it quite a bit of times and it's just really confusing I don't understand what's going on in this movie it's 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 really cool setup where it's this Orson Welles War of the Worlds radio broadcast that he did way back in the day and those of you who do not know what I'm talking about about Orson Welles really uh, infamous radio broadcast of War of the Worlds way back in the day uh, go uh, go write Orson Welles down on Google or YouTube and give it a listen. It's really cool. It's a cool little callback, uh, and that's what Pontypool is doing. This uh, this movie is actually based off of a novel. Pontypool changes everything. That a friend of mine read and said that it was really good, and uh, and said that the script was uh, somewhat rushed. The the movie script, the screenplay was somewhat rushed. He liked the book better than the movie, and then upon doing the research for this I found out that the the actual guy who wrote the book wrote the screenplay screenplay for the movie and he wrote it in under 48 hours so I don't know I I'm that seems like it's a rushed thing and it seems like my friend was right all along all these years all those years ago it starts off so well where you can actually you can actually just listen to it. You can close your eyes. You can put on the movie and you can close your eyes and just listen to what the, what's happening. And the slow build, the grind, uh, you as a viewer uh, understanding and finding out the mystery as the uh, three people in the radio, in the radio studio find out. And their calls to, uh, to Ken, Ken Lonely, who was played by uh, Rick Roberts. And Ken, you know, gives you these little updates here and there of what's happening outside. And, uh, and then they contact, you know, other people and they listen to uh, 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 other news reports and all that. And then they describe, like, the mayhem of these uh, infected people uh, 28 days later and it up in the small town. 
and and you really get a it's it's such a neat build up and the the way uh, Bruce McDonald did the camera panning and uh, and he had this this I love this color scape that he had it was just really kind of dark hue lights dimmed all the way down sort of radio broadcast show that uh, that that really made this kind of eerie sort of thing going on and then some of the calls that came in where uh, the people are starting to get infected with the, you know, the infected English word that they had. And, and it's, uh, it was a really, it's really cool to have that thing kind of happen to them. And, and it's, it's, it's really bizarre. It, it really is because you're like, okay, so the English language is the virus and the virus jumps from that to the word. And then the signal is, is any sort of English word, so someone repeats it enough, or someone gets confused enough, and then that, that happens. So if I put you put that aside, it's still a really cool uh, zombie survival horror movie from the perspective of people trying to report it, and that's what makes this movie really, really cool. It gets to the point where it gets a little, um, I don't know what's the word, uh, dreary at the end there where you just kind of went I kind of thought to myself yeah maybe it should have ended maybe in a maybe at that part at the end or maybe this little part but it, it it dragged on just a little bit longer than I liked it I liked it to be could have made it could have made it maybe a tight hour 20 <laughs> but hey who's who's to say who's to say it was still it's still a pretty cool movie uh, for, uh, at the end of the day, and it's still it's it's still fun to watch. It's still it's neat to understand. And anyways, getting back to closing your eyes and and just imagining, you know, listen just, just listening to it. And uh, it, they did such a great job of doing that. And uh, and old Steve McCaddy has such a wonderful, cool, raspy voice. And I and it's cool to hear him describe, try to understand, try to figure out. Uh, questioning his uh, his own sanity, his own beliefs, and then when you have um, as Sydney or Lisa Hole uh, as the um, as the pro- the production manager trying to you know producer trying to uh, corral the loose cannon Grant Mazzy played by McCaddy, you know, and uh, and then you have like the young uh, uh, Laurel Ann played by Georgina Rayleigh. Uh, there as the as kind of the, uh, the production assistant, and it's it's really cool uh, how it all kind of comes together, and how they kind of piece it together, which makes it really really impressive. When you adapt something from a novel, you can really butcher it. You can butcher the crap out of it, right? And if you're not doing it correctly, then it looks stupid. But if you do it just well enough, or or really good, or really well enough then you got yourself a really cool movie. So I, I tip my hat to the guy who actually wrote the book, it took about 48 hours to write a screenplay, and then this is what they kind of came out with. So it's there. you can tell there's a lot of um, meat to the bone. There's a lot of uh, neat little story and understanding and what, what he was trying to get across. There's some really cool commentary on... on, uh, on uh, on, on law enforcement and military and all that, which is um, which is pretty pretty cool to hear and, uh, and understand uh, from a from a zombie movie that that uh, most zombie movies kind of corral and, uh, and and get law enforcement and army to uh, to assist them. So this was kind of a neat little little uh, slap in the face of them, of them a little bit, but and yet. Uh, Georgina Riley played Laura Ann Drummond, who was a uh, a person that served uh, in the in the military, and uh, and she was quite useful and helpful. So yeah, maybe it wasn't such a slap in the face. Maybe I just didn't get that part uh, in the beginning of the film when uh, old Grant Mazzy's you know bad mouth and uh, law enforcement and calling everyone drunks and all that. Maybe I just didn't understand that. I don't understand a lot of things, and that leads me to believe that if I were in the middle of this zombie infection. I would be impervious because I do not understand any English word. 
<laughs> it comes out of my mouth. I just, I just, I roll. I just roll the dice. And then when I put words together and, and sentences, it's just, it just comes out lucky and that's it. So I would be pretty awesome in this sort of zombie invasion. <laughs> There's a point in the movie where they figure out that if they speak in a different language, uh, they get interrupted with uh, the French, um, uh, French communication signal. That, that that's kind of the Achilles heel of this virus. So they start speaking, uh, you know, uh, I think it was a Romanian, uh, something European, from uh, from Dr. Mendez. And uh, they start uh, speaking in uh, French Canadian, and uh, that, that was a pretty cool trick for them to try to figure out, uh, you know, how to defeat it at the end there. And then there's a neat little scene at the very end where uh, one of them, uh, where Cindy is infected and she's saying kill, 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 because that's her trigger word, it uh, turned out, for her to go insane. And then Grant. You know, it says uh, you know, kill is kiss, kill is kiss to try to uh, deter her, try to mix up that word for her to not understand that that's what that word means anymore. And there's, it's neat, it's thought, it's really thought provoking that way. And it's neat how they, they kind of uh, battle it. Because, you know, the normal thing is, like in 20 Days Later in a zombie flick, it's just like, oh, look, there's an infected person or that person's about to be infected. Uh, violence. Let's do violent. Let's, you know, just kill them and, and get rid of them and smash them over the head and, and bonk them and destroy the brain and blah, blah, blah. This movie did something incredibly different where it, uh, where speech was the root of infection and the characters, the, the two main characters uh, were, were using speech to try to uninfect them themselves it, it, they were trying to fight fire with fire but it wasn't fire you know oh man oh man all oh, that that was that was pretty smart right <laughs> but nevertheless so it I liked how they did that and then there was a nice little commentary at the end where the Canadian army starts bombing the crap out of a little Pontypool town and blowing up stuff because they the the infection was spreading. It was getting bigger and bigger out of the old Pontypool township, and they had to uh, eradicate it. And then uh, Stephen McHattie's character Grant was like, "You son of a guns! You yeah, your your violence and and this and that." It's a nice speech. It's a nice arousing speech about violence and uh, solving issues with violence and all that and I liked how that uh, I liked how that word that, that kind of worked out and that, that turned out it's very nice it's very nice to see that once in a while nevertheless though with this being a zombie movie I loved it I loved the entire I, even though I recognize there's a lot of gaps and a lot of little weak little writing uh, hits and stuff like that this movie is still absolutely awesome and if you are a fan of any sort of zombie movie and you've seen a bunch of zombie movies and you really respond to it in a very positive note and you have not seen Pontypool 2008 this is absolutely 100% a must watch because this is one of the best zombie movies to come out of Canada yeah oh yeah it's right up there with uh, with Zack Snyder's uh, Dawn of the Dead remake where you can maybe have yourself a uh, zombie movies made in Canada or Ontario night with uh, with these two movies, and uh, and very and enjoy it, <laughs> enjoy if you enjoy what you're doing here. But the most important thing, though, I believe, though, and to stay under 20 minutes here because I don't want to go too long, is is this bootacular, or is it spooktastic? Is it eerily awesome? What is it? And at the end of the day, I'm going to have Pontypool 2008 spootastic. Yes, absolutely spootastic. Yeah, I think this is definitely a spootastic sort of movie, and it's uh, something that we, uh, we should all watch. And uh, that's it. So be sure to like, subscribe if you want, comment if you want. If you have any information that you feel I didn't say anything in this rant of mine, you know, add it to the comments below. Educate me on on the miseducation I gave possibly on this review and information. 
If you have a really good story in, in the real Ponty Pool, Ontario, let me know in the comments below. Because I only spent two hours in there, and then that was it. So if there's a good story, let me know. Just, just do it. Just do it. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, King Canada Hill. Hill spelled H I 1 1. If you want, I don't do very much on Instagram or Twitter. I, I occasionally post like Simpsons little quotes and stuff like that, and, uh, and plug my own little crap on this uh, on uh, my my YouTube thing. But that's it. But yeah, if you want to follow me, yeah, sure, go for it. It's cool. You can do whatever you want, man. I, I, it, it doesn't matter. You just do what you want. It's the freedom, the freedom to do what you want. But if you want to help me out, yeah, yeah, yeah it's do all just subscribe and like. Yeah, that would help me out. If you don't want to help me out, that's cool. I don't care. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, that's going to do it. We'll, uh, we'll spook you later, and we'll scare you next time.